Now the general fund is funded by tax revenues and non-tax revenues. This looks at the basic categories of general fund revenue that are going to be available in the next year according to the administration. Uh, uh, $27.9 billion in funds are available. Uh, the largest single category is $10.8 billion in personal income tax, $8.7 billion in sales tax, about $2 billion in corporate net income tax, $5.5 billion in other types of taxes that includes business taxes and just inheritance tax, really transfer tax, and then about, five, uh, about a half a billion dollars in transfers. Uh, this, is what, this is what the changes in revenue growth look like from last year. Uh, in, in particular, total revenues grow by 4.3%. Uh, personal income tax has a pretty healthy growth of 6.7%. That's about $700 million. It seems like a pretty big percentage, but in <coughs> during coming out of a recession, particularly one as deep, deep as the one we were in, when the states come out of it, that revenue growth tends to be pretty high in those first couple of years. Um, the sales tax is much, grows much less. Uh, that's our second biggest source of revenue. It's about 2%. That's been growing fairly steadily uh, the last two years, so it's, uh, it doesn't have as much room to grow. Um, in terms of the other, the other two business, the two big business taxes are the corporate net income tax, that's supposed to increase by uh, about 9.5%. That's about offset by the loss of capital stock and franchise tax, uh, which is a, declined by 8.1%. That's due to some rate cuts that I'm going to talk about in just a second. Um, uh, one thing that's kind of unusual, liquor tax is uh, really high in this next year. I'm not really sure what that's about. Uh, people who might be needing to buy more liquor. <laughs> so even with all this growth, and you know, talk about like the recovery and everything like that, our revenues are still going to be below where they were before the recession started. So you, could, you know, if you think about like how many more, you know, with safety net programs and things like that, Medicaid how many more services would be demanded from state government, yet we still have fewer dollars to work with than we did three years ago. A number of proposed revenue changes, not as many as uh, we've had in previous years. Um, in general, no new taxes, at least at the state level, have been proposed. Um, the, there have been a number of business-friendly uh, reductions that have been, uh, that the administration would like to adopt, that includes Bonus depreciation, uh, which is a federal change that the state has in past years decoupled from. The administration has decided that it would be better just to go along with the federal government, and that allows businesses to write off uh, equipment in the first year purchase as opposed to depreciating it over time. That ends up being, uh, depending on the source you look at, between like $140 million a year, uh, that's going to cost the state in the next couple of years. Over time, we're supposed to get the funds back, but right now, with the budget situation, now. Um, other things are there's been some changes proposed for increasing the research and development tax credit and then uh, reductions to the film tax credit and the job creation tax credits. Um, in the budget deal a couple years ago there were temporary reductions in a number of credit programs. Those all go away this year and they go back to their, uh, their statutory limits. Um, there's also, also part of that budget deal was the freezing of the capital stock and franchise tax at 2.89 mills. It is scheduled to start decreasing again this year, and that's going to go down to 1.89 mills. So it's and then will be phased out in two years. And also, the tobacco settlement fund is going to be brought into the general fund, and the spending that the tobacco settlement fund is going to just be considered general fund spending. So this is the story that we've been getting from the administration uh, since the budget's been released, and it's. Uh, Revenues can't increase fast enough to uh, offset the increases in spending. Um, if, looking at the, the chart they had, I tried, with some, tried to make sense of some of the numbers and I wasn't able to do it. But, uh, <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see. Uh, but I, you know, I think with the expenditure increases, it's, it's just they put a growth rate on it and it, and it just goes. And as you can see, there's this big gap there. But in reality, I think most of the time, budgets are managed. And I think we have another point of view on this, and I think rather than looking just at cuts, which is the way the administration has really kind of attacked this budget, and cuts for you know, business tax cuts at the same time, 
I think what we would like to see are more targeted cuts in the budget, uh, improved accountability, and additional revenue. And there are a number of items that I think Sharon will be talking about. So thank you very much. changes 
the approach when it comes to environmental uh, regulation and oversight. And the governor called upon Pennsylvanians to engage in shared sacrifice in addressing the budget. Uh, the three main priorities, two of which I took off, um, the governor's also argued that he will support and make a priority of private school vouchers 